In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word, whose cho- who chose to bring flesh of the vir- become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. to prepare the way before me and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire yes he is coming says the Lord of hosts but who will endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears for he is like the refiner's fire or like the fuller's line He will sit refining and purifying the silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest they come and strike the land with doom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Lift up your heads and see. Your redemption is near at hand. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their destruction. Lift up your heads and see. Your redemption is near at hand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name, and all were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened, his tongue free, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the whole country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel of Luke is part two of a bigger story, so we need a quick rehash of part one to understand it. If you will recall, Zechariah is serving in the temple when the angel Gabriel appears with news of great joy and gladness. Elizabeth, his wife who is barren, will conceive and bear a son. They are to call the boy John, who will receive the spirit and the power of Elijah, when, as a grown man, as John the Baptist, he will prepare the people for the one who will come after him, the one who is mightier than he. But poor Zechariah, he doubts Gabriel, even when the angel makes it clear that he brings this revelation from God himself. As punishment, Zechariah is made mute until Gabriel's words are fulfilled, and the boy receives his God-given name. God-given names. God often does that, doesn't he? Changes someone's name. Abram to Abraham. Jacob to Israel, Simon to Peter, Saul to, Saul to Paul. In John's case, too, he is meant to be named after his father. And in every case, with the change in identity comes a change in one's purpose, one's mission in life. Well, brothers and sisters, the same is true for each and every one of us. We have been given a new name, Christian. We have been given a new identity. Through our baptism, we have put on Christ. We have been given a new purpose, a new mission as well. To proclaim to all the world the name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Note that in today's gospel, God restores Zechariah's speech so that he can announce the name of the one who is to announce the coming of the Lord. And this gives us something to ponder for today. We, too, are required to proclaim the Lord Jesus. Are we like John the Baptist, who with great confidence in God boldly evangelizes people? Or are we like Zechariah, whose doubts quite literally silence his lips? We can and should have full confidence in Christ Jesus. So let us, like John, go out to all the world and proclaim the good news. God bless.
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us be our perfect reconciliation with you, O Lord that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all of the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, Robert, his assistant Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. Amen.
body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Mm. The body of Christ. Mm. The body of Christ. Mm. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those you have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Just a reminder that tomorrow Mass is at 8 a.m., 8 a.m. for the Christmas Eve morning Mass, and then the Masses of Christmas begin at 4, 6, 10 uh, in the evening, all in the evening on Christmas Eve and 10.30 a.m. on Christmas Day. Mass next week during the octave of Christmas is at 9 a.m. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, Cast into the house Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.